Hello, this is going to be a short video that demonstrates the Sierra chart spread order entry study and spread order entry functionality in general. We're not going to talk about exchange traded spreads, but I will briefly mention them. So the difference between the spread order entry study and exchange traded spreads is that the spread order entry study allows you to trade more complex and custom spreads, whereas the exchange traded spreads are limited to the ones provided by the exchange. So I'll start off by showing you the documentation that you can find for this. So when you go to sierrachart.com, go under documentation, table of contents, then under trading, and then under spread order entry study. And this is what we're going to cover here today. Now, before we get there, I just want to show you how you can display the exchange traded spreads in Sierra chart as well. And this will be in a different video, but just to show you the difference. So I have a chart book opened here. And I'll go up to File, Find Symbol. And then for any symbol, I'll just find the symbol I want in this case. Um, we can see the menu here for Get Spreads. I'll select that. And we get the symbol selection window with the exchange traded spreads that are available for this symbol. And if we look carefully, we can see that these are only calendar spreads. So if you wanted to do something more complex, like sell the ES and buy the NQ, or something like that, you're going to have to use the uh, spread order entry study. So let's show how to use that now. I'll close this for now and go back to our chart book. I have a chart book here of two charts in it. One of them is set to the ESU23 symbol. The other chart is set to NQU23. Now, just to show you the charts in the chart book first, I'll go up to window, windows and chart books. And you can see there are our two charts. Now, I want to be clear about one thing. Um, in order for your orders to show on your chart um, so that you can see these things happening properly, um, you need to make sure to enable chart trading as well. So go up to trade and make sure that chart trade mode is set to on. You don't have to enable the trade DOM or anything like that. Just chart trading mode needs to be on. So let's show two different methods of adding the study to the chart. Now, typically, the easiest way to do this would be to add it from the trade window. So I'll add the trade window to the chart first. I'll go to trade, open trade window for chart. And here's the trade window. Normally this might appear attached. So if it's not attached, it might look like this. Um, but when it is attached, if you want to attach it, you can go to trade, attach trade window to chart. And this is how it might look by default sometimes. So now that you have the trade window here, go to the last tab on the trade window with the letter A, click there. And uh, there's a menu here for spread orders. Now, you can control some of the functionality of the spread order entry study here. As you can see, there's a button for enable. I'll start by clicking enter spread order. And you can see that um, this adds the study to our chart and brings us into the settings window immediately. So this menu for the spread order entry study is where we are going to configure our spread orders. So as you can see, it's appeared in chart region two to start off. If we put it in chart region one, it won't work very well because what this study is going to do for us is it allows us to display and get the price of a custom spread you might input. Okay, so let's create a new spread right now. You can have up to four legs in the spread. I'm going to put in two of them to start. So you can type in the symbol directly into the input value box, or you can select find symbol and then put it in from there as well. So I already know which symbol it's going to be, so I'll just type it in. In this case, it's ESU. 23 and then I will go over to leg two symbol and I will type in the second symbol in the spread which is NQU 23. Now we can go ahead and adjust the side and the quantity. This is an example where you would buy one ESU 23 and sell one NQU 23. I'll select apply now and you can see when we apply that it gives us the spread price here. This is essentially the last traded price of this spread that we've inputted. Now, if you change the quantity or change any of these fields, the spread price will change. So if I go ahead and change the ESU by quantity for leg number one to two, and I apply it, you'll see that now the spread price has changed. And it will take a few seconds um, before it overwrites the old prices to show you um, a readable graph of this. So just wait a second and you'll see that. The next thing we need to configure is the spread entry price, and we can also configure target prices and stop prices. We can go ahead into spread entry price, and in this case, I'm going to 
write in a price that's below the current market price. So since this spread is priced with a negative value, I'm going to enter a negative price value that is below the current market price. So I'll enter negative 61.75 and I'll apply that. And you can see now we have our entry price which has appeared down there on the chart. The next thing I'll do is I'll actually put in a stop and a target as well. So for the stop spread price, I'll do minus 61.80, apply it. And for the target spread price, I will do minus 61.65. Now in order to show the target and stop prices on this graph over here, you need to enable two input settings. So the first one is use target after fill of spread entry. I'll just put it to yes. And I'll do the same for use stop after fill of spread entry. And now we can see our prices have appeared there. The next thing we need to do is once you're ready with your prices and all of that, you can activate the spread. Um, so as I showed earlier, you can actually enable it from the trade window itself, or you can enable it from the study settings input number one here. So once you set is active and waiting for spread trigger price, to yes, let's do that now. You can see it changes the message to monitoring for spread entry price. So it means that it's active and it's waiting for the spread entry price to be achieved. Our spread entry price is minus 6170 here, so we're not quite there yet. We can disable it and enable it from the trade window as well. Now just be aware that at this point, the study has not sent any orders yet. This is a client side study that is operating here. It's waiting. It's waiting for that price to be achieved. So if you turn off Sierra chart, um, this would not continue to be working anymore. Now, just to demonstrate this further, I'll go up to trade and I'll open up the trade orders window. And you can see that there are no orders here. And it just so might happen that our spread order might be triggered. And it seems to have been triggered right there. Now, these orders were sent as market orders. And um, you can see now we're in a position. So if we go up to trade, trade positions window, we can see our open positions. Now, it does not display the position as a spread, though it just shows the positions you have in the individual symbols. So I'm going to open up the trade account monitor by going up to trade, trade account monitor. And I also wanted to demonstrate the fact that the margins here there is a high margin requirement for this position right here. Um, whereas with an exchange traded spread, normally there is a reduced margin. So now what I'll do next is I will just move the target price by a few points just to get out of this trade. So I will press F6 on the keyboard, move this over a little bit just so you can see things, and then go into this study by double clicking on it. And now I will select the target spread price and I will move it down to 6170. Okay, so it seems as though our target was triggered. As you can see here, the message says target slash stop triggered. So that is a basic demonstration of how the spread order entry study works in Sierra chart. Thank you for watching.